we want to say hello to everybody in the community, particularly uh, Macon and what is presently known as Macon and Bibb County. And I use the word presently because very soon it's going to be known only as with a consolidated government. I guess we'll call it Macon. We call it Macon Bibb. Macon Bibb, Georgia. Macon Bibb, Georgia. Macon Bibb, Georgia. And I'm so proud to have one of the, uh, well, no, let me do it this way. I'm so proud to have the chairman of the Bibb County Commission with me today, uh, Mr. Sam Hart who not only is the chairman of the present commission, but is also vying to be the mayor of the consolidated government. This is the second in a series of interviews that I'm doing regarding uh, the upcoming, not only the mayoral election, but the election period. I'm not going to interview all of the candidates, but I, of course, am going to interview all of the mayoral candidates. And I thought that it was, it's extremely important that the public makes an informed decision. You know, oftentimes when I'm having a scenario where voting is needed for a particular issue, when I teach it, I tell them, now you don't vote for your friends. You don't vote for who's best looking. You don't vote for who's, you know, wearing the, the, the best clothing. You don't vote for who's most articulate. You vote for the person who will be more capable of doing the job that will improve the entire community. So I'm giving everybody a chance to say why they should uh, uh, be the new mayor of this new community. How you doing, Chairman? I'm doing fine. How you doing? And thanks for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for coming. I want you to begin. You know, we're going to talk about several things. I won't tell you all of them, you know, initially, but I'm sure that they, they, they are the kind of questions that you've been asked and answered before. But I really view this as an opportunity, you know, to move this community forward. Uh, I think that we've got a lot of candidates. I think, you know, there are certain inherent things that are going on in the community, like water and location and things of that nature. But I think it all, the, how well we do centers around leadership. So first of all, just say a little bit about yourself, then I'll answer some specific questions. Okay, uh, well I'm Sam Hart. I worked at Mercer University for 32 years before retiring. But in addition to, to uh, working in education, I've uh, been in, in uh, public service for the last 14 years, uh, uh, going on 15. But I, work, I served 10 years in a, as a district commission, District 1. Uh, the east side of, of, of Bibb County uh, and some of the south side. And most recently, though, I've been chairman of the Bibb County Board of Commissioners, and that serves the entire uh, county. And so uh, I was recently re-elected uh, as chairman of the Bibb County Board of Commissioners. But because of consolidation, it's a one-year term. Okay. Because in 2014, we were able to consolidate. Okay. Uh, what would happen on your watch? It would happen on my watch. <laughs> But, uh, I, but I'm totally in favor of moving yeah, in that direction. And I know that, that, that you endorsed it. Um, yeah. You also got some kind of recognition from your peers, too, with uh, the county commissioners. Uh, it looked like I read something. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, recently I was uh, I'm the second vice president uh, for the uh, board of directors and board of managers for the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia. Uh, but uh, I received the uh, Ember Green Leadership Award at the last conference, uh, which is the top award that the association, uh, the association gives. Uh, and it was for uh, in recognition of, of uh, leadership and things that I've done. Well, that's outstanding. You know, Ember Green was a friend of mine. You know, I, I, I knew Ember for a long time. I remember the fact, you know, when I first got elected, he along with Albert and some of the other commissioners. He, he, he certainly held in high esteem yeah. throughout this state. I know, but that's a, and that's, that's that's a state award. award. That's a state award. Yeah. That's a top award that they give. Yes, Name it is on. Well, there are several component issues facing us in this community, and I want to try to discuss them. And unlike a lot of other people, or a lot of other journalists, if you please, or hosts, 
you know, I'm going to make my first one education. You know, although the commission is not, or the government is not, the city or county government is not directly responsible for education. You know, I submit that, you know, that, that whoever's in charge, that education is a key component of how well this community advances. So if you would talk, you know, about your view on education and specifically what you will do to try to improve the situation in uh, Bill County. I, I think you're right. Uh, when we look at the kinds of things that, that uh, impedes our growth, uh, 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 it's, it's education that almost every uh, time we, as government has responsibility to try to grow the community. And so you look for those things that are impediments to, to that kind of growth. And so uh, when you look for the one consistent thing that we find lately, it has been education. Uh, as you know, our community uh, in the public schools have had a um, graduation rate of less than 50% for a number of years. And as a result of that, you got a, a large number of young folk who uh, uh, sort of fell in the, through the cracks and are out there without a high school diploma. And uh, so when companies come looking for, at this area, uh, for uh, either putting their business in this area, they look and want to know where's the workforce. And they certainly are not looking for people who are not graduating. So I think the our challenge as it relates to that is to do something about education. What can we do? I think part of what we got to do, we, we got to work on, we got to be a balanced approach. We got to work on one end and continue to work with the public schools to make sure we improve those and continue, you know, to, to support uh, other options for people who choose not to go into the public schools. But, but we certainly uh, got to make sure our public schools go. That's where most of our young folk will, will be and it will, 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 will help us to create that pool of people we, we got to have. So we got to work with the public schools to make sure we continue to, to do that. And part of what I uh, propose as it relates to that is we got to have a closer connection to them. And folks say, well, we, we need to sit on the school board. Well, even if we don't sit officially on that school board, we got to make sure we have an unofficial, uh, unofficial uh, uh, relationship with them but we're talking to the leadership, especially the superintendent and the, and the president of that board, to make sure we are aware as, as to what that challenges are and to see how we can uh, deal with them together. By the same token, as it relates to our industrial uh, uh, development piece, we got to make sure that that board and that uh, administrative staff would be represented on our industrial piece. Right. So they're aware of what some of the challenges are for bringing industry into our area. We also got to work very closely with somebody like the, uh, the, the, the Technical College, who has a, a wonderful program to uh, uh, to get kids GED. Right. And so we got to work with them to make sure that we fill in those gaps where people have, have, have fallen through the cracks to see if we can't rescue some of those kids by getting them GEDs. But in addition to getting them GEDs, see if you can't do uh, the joint kind of enrollments where they're doing that, but also learning skills. Right. So so when they get the GED, not only will they have that, but they have some skills that are marketable and get a job. So you deal with those. And you got to also uh, encourage people like uh, Gets Lane's program to continue to expand its services to help to get kids out of that, uh, out of the crack and rescue them as well. So I think we got to, we got to engage people, uh, use our leadership position uh, as mayor to engage other people to assist in what we're doing, but also with those institutions we have the responsibility for doing. We need to be a partner with them to make sure we continue to do things. And now that the third piece of that is as it relates to that, we got to deal with that group, but we also got to stop that group that, that sort of falls through the cracks. And part of that will be kids who often get into the juvenile justice system and get things uh, uh, against them so that rather than being able to stay in jail, I mean stay in uh, school, they go to jail. So part of what we're doing, as you saw, and I think you've seen it, you were there during the time that we were doing the Juvenile Justice Center, that will be uh, a center where we will have a juvenile court. But in addition to that, we'll have intervention teams present there 
that can intervene, provide counsel, provide services, provide whatever, as a way of uh, deterring people from continuing in the system, right. but also encourage them to get back into positive situations uh, as quickly as possible. That is, get back in school. Well, I appreciate uh, your, yeah. your uh, comprehensive uh, discussion on education because it's all new, as quiet as it's kept. Unless we improve, improve the educational system and improve the image of the educational system and improve, <coughs> excuse me, the image of our community, then we're whistling in the wind. Now, the other thing that I think is interesting that uh, I guess uh, all of the candidates kind of mention it, but it seems that your focus is, 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 is built pretty heavily on community. I notice your slogan has been uh, think community. And one might would say, well, you know, this is making a big county. You know, why would we say think community? Because I think, you know, if I heard you right once or twice, that you're talking about regionalism in thinking community. So why do you think that's important? I think it's extremely important that that as, as we if we're to move our community forward, then we gotta uh, think about it as, and, and even the problem of education, think about it as a community need, as a community kind of effort that we got to, and a community thing that we got to overcome. But uh, part of how many leaderships are required, somebody with a vision for our community, but also the managerial skill to make and put things in place. So you're going to have to find somebody with a balance of, of uh, I guess, vision, but also uh, uh, enough of the person to transact what needs to happen in a period of time. What it, to put, make sure you got the appropriate infrastructure in place to move this community forward. Now, how do you do that? You do that by engaging in, uh, people to do what you need to do. So in some instances, like uh, uh, the Bills Hill kind of thing, some of what they're doing downtown with uh, uh, Newtown, you create public private kinds of partnerships to do housing, to do other kinds of things there. Well, part of what you have to do is make sure you got appropriate resources. And if we continue to think inward and not, out, and not you know, think regionally, then we would never get all the resources we, we, we need. If we are to move our community to the point of being competitive and being the hub, it means we got to engage the Hudson counties and the Monroe counties and the Jones County, we got to work together to secure the kind of uh, 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 employers in our community, sell our community as a region, and then as we go to Atlanta, we got to go to Atlanta and Washington as a region, because I think the kind of things that's going that that will impact uh, uh, us will also impact them, but the kind of thing that will make us whole will also make them whole. So I think part of what we got to do is we got to put our heads together that if we want to expand uh, 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 our airport, and that's a wonderful thing to do, but suppose again, that's a 10-year kind of, 20-year kind of vision that we have. Something that might be more immediate would be, can we work out a relationship with Robbins out there to have dual use of that? Well, that runways. And so, if, you know, some of the kind of things we got to do, but we do that only in in working with the house and county and whatever. Is there a need for a back road into uh, Robbins uh, that might come off of somewhere like the Southern Church area uh, coming back in there? That's something we need to work with house and county. But if we do that, does it help our distribution centers that we are, that we created to, to, to continue to, to, to employ people to do that? But I think part of what we got to do is make sure we have the infrastructure. And for the most part, the infrastructure that we need is a good, working team of people hmm. that can work together, that can set goals, that create a strategic plan that moves this community into the 20, solidly into the 21st century. I'm glad you used the word people and team. Uh, and there has been conflicting information on the role that, you know, people particularly our leaders have played in this community. Some people purport that it's, uh, it's not up to the leaders, you know, it's up to the community. And some people purport 
that you know you got to have good core leadership to to ascertain the confidence of the community to move the community forward. Uh, what is your position on really bringing? And, and as you know, historically, you know. In many instances, the leadership in this community has been separated. You know, one going one way, one going the other way, one going Republican, one going Democrat, one going black, one going white, one going public education, one going private education, one one going right to work, the other one will. There's so all kinds of positions which are understandable. Well, how do we kind of build a bridge, you know, to uh, I'm reminded of uh, Russia and the United States, you know, with that kind of conflict. And of course, it's not going to get any better if there's no communication. But you got to be willing, I think, you know, to play a role in in, 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 in communicating. So I'm not editorializing on, you know, the president's decision. I'm just saying, you know, there is a need. There's a need. There's a need. You know, particularly in. In, in our community for people, people, you know, to get together and work together. So were you elected, you know, then how do you uh, uh, purport to effectuate that? Well, I, I think part of you're exactly right. The thing that would make us an effective uh, community would be how well we can engage people working together, think community. You gotta again uh, have a leader who recognize that perhaps the role of government is to facilitate, not to do everything. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so often what you do is when you get leaders with a sometimes a whole lot of charisma, but you look at the end of the year, very little has been done other than they're liked personally. But when you look at the bottom line, that you need people who can engage people, who can get things done. You take Detroit, you look at Detroit, they had a real a leader with a tremendous amount of charisma. But as you looked at it and looked over the number of years, what happened? The businesses left that area. And Detroit went from 2 million people to less than 600,000, or right at 600,000 now. And all the businesses gone down, and so they, they filed bankruptcy. It's because they didn't have the, the leadership that engaged folk help people involved. Right. And you gotta engage the diversity of your community. You gotta engage the diversity of your community. Atlanta did a wonderful job. If you remember a part of when they had uh, Maynard Jackson, Maynard came in and made sure again that, that everybody who sits around that table got a piece of that pie. Because he said it's important to grow the middle class of that community. And, it grow, and, and that included the diversity of the community. By the same token then, Andy Young came in afterwards and he served to keep the big businesses from leaving Atlanta, who had threatened to leave at one point, because they had gotten upset. But he said, okay, you know, I can win without you, but I can't govern without you. So i got to make sure you stay in town. And what happened? The Coca-Colas and the other places stayed in that town and look at Atlanta now. Atlanta's one of the, the, the city of the south. And so I think we got to do a similar kind of thing, is we can't, we, we, we got to have leadership that recognize that you got to engage the diversity of the community, but everybody, and you got to convince them, that diversity, that everybody ought to get a piece of that pie. And I think it's important in our community that we got to grow our middle class, and that's especially the, uh, the, the minority middle class. It has to grow, because when, when that happens and the capital income improves, crime goes down, graduation rates go up, so because people take another uh, pride, uh, another amount of pride in terms of how they deal with it. I was recently in a community uh, that homeownership had increased tremendously. Guess what happened? Crime went down. I was there when the crime report was given, and it's best it's ever been. It has gone down. I'm saying that so when people make a little bit more, more money, and that's why, again, you got to have leadership that committed to grow this community, and that means you engage the diversity. Hi, this is Alex Habersham, your host for A Call to Action. Happy to report to the community that we're going to be doing a series of interviews with all of the mayoral candidates in an effort to keep the community informed on the important issues 
surrounding our city and our county. We're going to be talking to them about economic development, about education, about quality of life, and other kinds of things that's going to help to make this a better community, about how to pull the community together as a result of consolidation. And we also, of course, are going to talk about their views on how we can become more uh, united from a racial perspective. So tune in and join us for a call to action interviewing the mayoral candidates. Look to see you here. Sam Hart, chairman of the county commissioners, uh, interviewing him about his candidacy uh, to be the, the mayor of the consolidated government. This is the second in a series of interviews that I will be conducting. You know, we got a race coming up, and I want to be sure that the community knows that. Now, let me tell you something. Everybody ought to vote. You know, too much happened. You know, uh, you know, everybody ought to vote, but every African American showed enough, and I mean it just like that. S H O N U F F. Show enough. <laughs> All the vote because you know we got to look at our history and look at what happened. You know we didn't always have these rights. They had to pass our act and act. We are Americans, but they had to pass an act for us to be able to vote. So that right ought to be exercised by everybody who's eligible to vote and they'll vote nay. So I just want to give you some dates here. Uh, the last day to register vote is August the nineteenth. Uh, you can cast an absentee ballot at, at, at any time. You know, and you don't have to have a reason. You can just go and cast your ballot uh, absentee. Oh, early voting day. You can vote early. Early voting date uh, is from dates are from August the 26th through September the 13th. Uh, a picture ID must be provided by the voter. Election Day is Tuesday, Tuesday, September the 17th, and everybody's hoping to be in a runoff, and not only be in a runoff, but we're in the election. Uh, so on September the 17th is Election Day, and if nobody wins with a majority, then the runoff will be October the 15th. That's important. Now, so you've been in that position, Chairman Hart. Talk about what you think your accomplishments were in that position. Well, in, 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 in the position I'm currently in, we, we have a tremendous amount of accomplishments. And I guess very lately we, we've had, uh, as you know, we, we, we passed uh, the service delivery strategy that had been out there for a number of years and had gotten done. We what got you mean that service delivery? That was part of that whole double tax activation piece. And we want to know exactly who had responsibilities for certain services. Uh, that had been lingering out there, and, and it, as a result of that, it produced a double taxation on some citizens. We were able to resolve that and get that going, and it led to the past, past of a spots that gave us uh, $200 million to put toward infrastructure, which we're currently doing and, and working to do some things that, that had not been done terribly, a uh, uh, bunch of neglect in, in the uh, recreation facilities and whatever, swimming pools and whatever. Just years of, of, of neglect where there have been no repair and, 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 and unsafe for kids. So we're making those things, making those repairs, and also doing some things for the center uh, and putting a real emphasis on wellness. Because as you know, in our particular community, that's a big issue. Yes, and so we're making sure, again, that we don't just have recreation facilities, but we have an emphasis on wellness. We're doing, we're doing something that relates to the, uh, uh, the crime issue uh, by making sure that there are uh, adequate uh, cars and things for the first responders to, to get to place in, in a timely fashion. Uh, we've put new fire stations out there. Uh, but the big thing that I've done uh, and looked at is we've been extremely responsible and good stewards of the, the money. I think that's a big key, that people want to know that, that uh, the dollar spent well. So every year we've got an award for our audit. And every year, we our fund balance has gone up. So we uh, we were just looking today, and compared to the city and other things, we have had consistently a great budget. 
and also in terms of the, you know, uh, everybody's want to make sure you got good credit. The county has great credit, <laughs> and uh, we are like the water authority. We are a double A, uh, two, which is not. You can be a triple A, but we're the best in this city, and we've been that way for a number of years. As a matter of fact, during my tenure, we improved uh, uh, our rating, and so you know we we are at a position where we can get the very best rated uh, rates rather for uh, uh, for monies and whatever. So so I've been a good steward of, of those responsibilities. I make sure again that those things we have responsibility for as relates to the slots we've gotten done. We make sure we. I've engaged people in terms of getting some things to make sure we we, 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 uh, we did the things we were supposed to do. Uh, and so we, we had a good tenure. Okay. Well, you got two minutes to solicit uh, the vote. You can uh, ask the people to vote for you and tell them why. Okay. I, I think this is an extremely important election. It's a time when we will have uh, the opportunity to improve our community. We have a tremendous amount of momentum, and we don't need to lose it. Uh, what we need at this point in time is a leader who has vision, but also one who is capable of managing to make sure again that we can bring people together. Remember, this is consolidation. It's a new government. We're bringing new people in. We're operating totally different from what we've operated in the past. And so you need somebody who can engage folks, who can work very closely with people, who is a consensus builder, who can make sure that things are done appropriately and that it uh, even though we got a transition team to do consolidation, there is no way that we'll be ready and totally consolidated in 2014. It will take another two or three years. You got to have a leader who can do that to bring people together, and that we don't have a dysfunctional uh, uh, operation for the next three years. We will put in place the appropriate infrastructure for this community to grow, and then we can start talking about realizing some of those visions that we got. And so you need a leader. But you need one who can engage people and who, who's a consensus builder and can make it happen. So I ask for your vote because I think this community is too important uh, not to have a great leader and to make sure we continue the momentum uh, that, that we've started. This is a call to action. A call, call to, to action. action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Hart, Chairman. I appreciate it. You know, for interviewing us, and we'll continue with other candidates and. You know, so stay tuned. This is a call to action. A call, call to action. action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham. Have a great day. www.makingblackpages.com